So I've been going on the War Thunder subreddit and watching content creators about War Thunder. And I've noticed a pattern about their complaints. They always complain about World War II vehicles facing post-war vehicles. They throw examples like the BMP-1 with ATGMs facing tanks like the Tiger II or the R3T20 facing whatever it is that it's facing right now. And I've noticed one thing about the examples they're throwing up. It's just the vehicle itself is broken, not when it was made. It seems they want to peg their argument on something that somehow makes sense to green credibility. Of course, if you frame the idea in something ridiculous like the R3 is not even in the same decade as the Panzer IV, naturally, you'd sound credible, and people would be inclined to agree with you. But any cursory examination of that argument is when it starts to fall apart. Think about it closely. If we're talking historical matchmaking, we're talking historical matchmaking across the board. This doesn't just mean the vehicles you're struggling against that will go up. No one ever considers the mundane vehicles. They won't throw you examples like the Type 60 ATM or the PBV-301 to make their point, because those vehicles aren't OP. It's never been about historical matchmaking. It's about getting inconvenience because they're dying to it. Here's something to consider. Do people actually talk about the Concept 4 NG? Because that thing was post-war as post-war gets. It entered service around the same time as the Centurions or the Leopards. Or would more people actually talk about the BMP-1 if the 9K111 Conqueror's launcher wasn't added as an upgrade? Matching the BRs of vehicles based on their release date will put something like the Rattle 90 at 9.3. Hell, France put the AMX-30 B2 Brennus out during Desert Storm, so does it make sense to put it at the M1A1's BR? Think about it. See, that's the issue with arguing based on a small subset of vehicles. You're losing the forest for the tree. People fixate on tanks like the Tiger II fighting post-war tanks that they don't realize that throwing historical matchmakers do actual harm than good. Okay, so you're going to say, Doc, I just want reasonable historical matchmaking. I just want World War II tanks not to face ATGMs. Then I'll tell you there are only two nations out of the ten existing that don't have ATGMs at a battle rating lower than 7.7. .7. Germany has the Martyr and the Rocket and Jagdpanzer II. USSR and China have their BMPs. Britain has the Swingfire. France has the AMX-13 SS-11. Japan has the Type 60 ATM. Israel has the Zaklam Tiger, And Sweden has the Stridsvon A21 RB-52. These vehicles have to be moved to 9.0, the lowest possible battle rating that World War II vehicles will ever face. Or if we take it literally, anything with an ATGM has to be 9.0 or higher. Of course, that's preposterous. The IT-1, M113 with toes, the Bradley, the Warrior, don't belong at 9.0. The thing is, it's not a historical problem. It's a BR decompression problem. When you start framing it on BR issues, it becomes actually more reasonable and makes sense. At 7.3, the BMP-1 can face the Patons, Leopards, and the Centurions. Those are reasonable adversaries for the BMP-1. The BMP-1 only becomes a nuisance because it can also be down tier 2, fight 6.3 tanks like the Charioteer. Framing it as a BR issue opens you to more examples like the M1 Abrams being in the BR bracket for the T-64A, and you can also extend that argument to say that the T-64A Having to face the Abrams is ridiculous, but there's nowhere lower to put it. Placing it at 8.7 is a more ridiculous proposal because then tanks at 7.7 that have awful rounds like the Magok 3 or Centurion Mark 10 will be facing auto-loaded 125mm MBT that is the T-64A that has composite armor and has actually good speed. So that's the crux of BR compression. There are tanks that are bad at its BR, but you can't move it because it becomes more overpowered or it becomes more useless. This is the emergent property that you have when you're managing over around 2,000 vehicles in the game. You're always going to overlook something 
that the community will have to bring to you. That's why we have to continue raising our expectations at Gaijin when it comes to BR changes. We have to keep complaining, we have to keep them giving them feedback so that they know which vehicles should be up tiered and not down tiered. Here, so to conclude, historical matchmaking isn't actually the solution. It's BR decompression. BR decompression solves more problems than historical matchmaking, and it goes by War Thunder's performance and capability balancing philosophy. By arguing that World War II tanks face World War II tanks and not modern, you're throwing up a more complex solution with more variables that are open for Gaijin to screw up. Instead, by framing it as a BR compression issue, you're simplifying the problem and presenting a simple solution. Of course, that's what I think. I want to know what you have to say about this. Because I've heard a lot of people say that there should be historical matchmaking. And don't even get me started on the ones that want Axis versus Allied teams in War Thunder. They want, they want to bring that back. That's another can of worms I do not really want to open. Anyways, thank you for watching. This is the Dr. MD. Come back next time when I argue that there should only be a Germany-only matchmaker. Thank you for watching.